On the show, Bharat Jodo Yatra is over. A redefined Rahul Gandhi is its new find. Can his new tapasvi image translate into votes? We tell you, as the third biggest generator of e-waste, why Prime Minister Modi has laid out an action plan to bolster India's e-waste recycling. Pakistan is in dire straits. You name it, and it's expensive. What's the reason behind this hyperinflation in India's neighborhood? And, believe it or not, Indians topped the list of real estate buyers in Dubai in the last seven years. You don't want to miss the reasons behind this new trend. This and more, get a view of India from the top angle. The nationwide Bharat Jodo Yatra may have helped former Congress President Rahul Gandhi in his image makeover. But the question is whether it will benefit the Grand Old Party electorally. The old guard in Congress has clearly taken a back seat. This Yatra was all about Rahul Gandhi and his intent of doing a secular politics. If the response of the participation translates into votes for Congress in the upcoming elections, that's something which remains to be seen. But his image, now described as a tapasvi or an ascetic, has galvanized the masses. His walk in the chilly winter wearing a t-shirt has become the talk of the town and has been much debated as well. At this time, more than a political facelift, it's the image makeover that the Congress needs and the Bharat Jodo Yatra has at least done that for Rahul Gandhi. I मैं ऐसा काम अपने लिए कभी कर ही नहीं सकता हूं मैंने ये काम मैंने ये काम हमारे कांग्रेसी मित्रों को ये अच्छा ना लगे मगर मैंने ये काम कांग्रेस पार्टी के लिए भी नहीं किया मैंने ये काम और हम सब ने ये काम हिंदुस्तान की जनता के लिए किया है जो विचारधारा इस देश की नींव को तोड़ने की कोशिश कर रही है उसके खिलाफ हम खड़े हों मिलकर खड़े हों up next, as an emerging superpower, India has a bright and exciting future ahead. Yet, its growth story is at risk of being overshadowed by growing mountains of electronic waste. Even Prime Minister Narendra Modi has emphasized the seriousness of the country's e-waste problem. As part of the 97th edition of his radio address, Man Ki Baat, the Prime Minister has drawn attention to the consequences of mounting e-waste. Stressing the need to create awareness about safe disposal of gadgets, the Prime Minister described how nearly 800 laptops are thrown away every second in India. He said, and I quote, Today's latest devices are also e-waste of the future. When somebody buys a new device or changes an old device, it is important to know whether it is being discarded in the right way. The Prime Minister has emphasized how carefully discarding e-waste will not only save the environment but also give a fillip to the economy of recycle and reuse. According to the UN-backed Global E-Waste Monitor, the world's e-waste contains raw materials worth 57 billion US dollars. Presently, India is the world's third largest generator of e-waste. In 2019, for instance, India generated 32 lakh tons of e-waste. Yet, only 22% of 10 lakh tons of the e-waste was processed. According to Fiki Circular Economy report, India could have extracted gold worth up to 1 billion US dollars from the e-waste alone. More than a decade ago, India's Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology had flagged just how concerning the country's e-waste problem could soon become. Even back then, the country was generating e-waste at an alarming rate of 10%. The same paper had even acknowledged how major recycling initiatives were being carried out by non-formal private players using quote-unquote primitive and hazardous methods. However, it is important to note that the collection and disposal of electronic waste is a global challenge and not just an India's problem. Globally, only 17.4% of an e-waste is formally collected and recycled. Even though many developed countries claim recycling rates as high as 50 to 70 percent, but the clear picture speaks a different story. It is therefore a collective burden that all countries must proportionately bear. Moving on now, Pakistan is on the brink of bankruptcy. As inflation rises to record levels, food prices skyrocket and its coffers run dry. 
and now it prepares to impose 200 billion rupees in new taxes amid a bailout from the International Monetary Fund. The markets are dull. Everyday essentials prices have skyrocketed, so much so that wheat and flour have now become a rare commodity in Pakistan. And to top it all, there is frequent power outage across the country. Pakistan's economy is now fast advancing towards a meltdown. A country long seen as a failed democracy is now also a proven failed economy. The 2022 devastating floods, global inflation, political instability and social turmoil are the factors responsible for Pakistan's plunge into mounting debts and economic catastrophe. The latest World Bank report reveals an alarming 6 million people in Pakistan currently experiencing acute food insecurity. And this is likely to increase to 8.5 million between September and December this year. Pakistan's currency depreciated to its lowest against the US dollar at 262 rupees. The State Bank of Pakistan has just 4.4 billion US dollars in its forex reserves, barely enough for three weeks of imports. Pakistan is facing a 28% inflation rate and with the breakdown of the supply chain, it may lead to hyperinflation. And to make the matters worse, many factories have halted production and have started laying off workers, potentially triggering an employment crisis as well. The situation is so precarious that hospitals across Pakistan have started running short of medicines. There may soon be shortages of essential goods such as fertilizers. And with malfunctioning of windscreen wipers or depleted fuel, the cars may soon shut off on a rainy day. Moving on now, it looks like Indians have really taken to buying property in Dubai. The data shows that their interest has increased rapidly since 2004. Statistics reveal Indian citizens acquired real estate valued at 1.86 lakh crore rupees between April 2015 and March 2022. Indians occupy the third largest percentage of non-resident purchasers following Britain and Russia. Much of this can be attributed to the ability for the Indian buyers to secure a 10-year visa now. After the events of the coronavirus pandemic in 2022, demand for Dubai's real estate skyrocketed. The residential property prices have climbed to 30,000 rupees per square feet. Indian investors have been in the top five for the last two decades, but have recently risen to the top spot when it comes to luxury property purchases. And many of the Indians buying land are doing so as an investment with the intention of being able to try and travel to India in a short time frame if needed. With the fears of pandemic receding and the world opening up, affluent Indians are also looking at acquiring luxury apartments in gateway cities of New York, Miami, London and Lisbon, but also not leaving Dubai. As far as Dubai is concerned, in 2022, the purchase value of the real estate increased by a whopping 76.5%. The number of investors increased by 44.7% in the same period. The real estate sector in Dubai is endeavoring to make Dubai the best residential hub in the world by 2026. And the 2040 master plan has been drafted to ensure that uh, the residential sector continues to grow rapidly in the future as well. The areas which recorded the highest sales transactions for villas and townhouses in 2022 were Dubai South, Damak Hills and Villa Nova, while the top three areas for apartment sales were Business Bay, Jumaira Village Circle and Downtown Dubai. On that note, this is the end of uh, this edition of Top Angle. Do check out the incisive news analysis and cutting-edge documentaries streaming on News9+.